Hi, welcome to Casual F Sharp and today we're going to be talking about how to write a function. Now that might seem an oddly simple topic, the syntax in F Sharp is really very straightforward, um, but there's actually quite a lot to designing a function and I thought I'd share with you my own personal method for doing this. If you want a little deeper dive into that, then I highly recommend Scott Vlaskin's book, Domain Modeling Made Functional. I may not cover everything that he talks about in there, but I'm gonna share with you my very pragmatic way of uh, kind of getting through the day. But you will certainly see some ideas that are in common with Scott's there. And this talk really, again, is inspired by this uh, tweet by Alistair Ray, where he shares a shapefile set that covers the whole of Great Britain. Uh, and that makes for some very exciting imagery. And we're going to produce some of that imagery today, or at least we're going to get some way towards producing it. This particular video will talk about how to design the function uh, in a very straightforward way. And then there'll be a follow up video where we'll fill in the implementations and actually get some imagery out. So here we go. Here I've got a project, I've called it OS Buildings Demo. If we look at the Solution Explorer, we'll see that I have already new getted in this thing called EasyGIS Shapefile Lib. Um, we also used it in my other video, which I guess I should probably show you. The kind of predecessor video to this is this query data using F -sharp collection functions. So you get a bit more background on the shape files there if you want it. But anyway, we've got Aegis uh, shapefile lib, and I've also added a reference to system.drawing. And the reason for that is that uh, Aegis shapefile lib returns points in the form of point F instances, and point F is defined in system.drawing. So the exercise we're going to set ourselves is to open a shapefile set, find a set of buildings that fall between a pair of points, and render them on a bitmap. And that's a very tempting, nice thing to do because shapefile lib actually returns polylines, essentially. So sets of uh, pairs of points, uh, and those can be rendered fairly directly onto bitmaps. Uh, this isn't going to be a substitute, obviously, for proper GIS kind of map rendering, uh, but it makes quite a nice little art project and a good exercise for uh, the aspiring f -sharp developer. So the way I would design such a thing would be to write some comments. I would say, what do we need to do first? Well, we need to get the buildings. And the reason I do it in comments first is simply because it divorces you from all the kind of realities of the syntax of the language you're using and lets you kind of think with your, your human brain. So we get the buildings, we need to find the buildings. And these are a kind of level of granularity where we can see each of these comments kind of being one little function. We need to uh, render the buildings. And I'm not going to attempt to write something that like shows this bitmap on a form. I'm just going to save it to the file system and we'll open it up with the Windows Photo Viewer um, or whatever you prefer. So we'll just say, save the bitmap. So there we've kind of got the whole logic of what we want to do in English. Then I'd start to think about the signatures of these functions. So we can, I guess we can kind of almost make these into XML comments with three slashes and then they will actually appear uh, in pop-up hints uh, at the call point of the functions. So we want to load the building, so let's call it load buildings. Uh, and where are we going to get the buildings from? Well, if you think back to the way these shape files are presented, we kind of define a shapefile set as being all the shape files, these files here, in a particular folder. So I guess we just need to have a directory path. Now, some folks would have you, and I'm kind of in partial agreement with this, not kind of natively use a string, but some kind of uh, arrangement for making sure the string can't be created empty or with null. I I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use a native .NET string. Now, the other thing is that we might want to search only in some of the files in a particular directory. Let's say the files are a very big data set, so we might want to just filter on file pattern. It's another string, native string. And that's kind of all we're going to need, I think. But then we focus on what's going to come back. Now, if you did look at the other video, you might remember that 
uh, a building is a set of polylines. Now you might think it would be one polyline, which would just be the perimeter of the building, um, but they are actually sets. And I'm guessing, and I haven't checked, I'm guessing this is because a building might have a void in it. So it might have like a rectangle within the building that's like a little enclosed garden or something like that. So anyway, uh, if you look at the data, uh, the buildings are sets of polylines. So since this is returning multiple buildings, it's going to be a set or sequence or I enumerable of I enumerables of polylines. So naively, and I'm just going to zoom out a bit, that would be kind of represented by, I could say, a sequence of sequences of a point F represents one point. So that would be correct, I think. That's a, a, a sequence or I enumerable of I enumerables of points. But that doesn't feel very satisfactory. It's not very explicit about what this is returning. Uh, and this is the way I'd get around that. I would say, well, what is a polyline? Now, again, naively, what you could say is, you could just use a type alias. So a polyline is some sequence of points. And likewise, a building is some sequence of polylines, bearing in mind this thing about possible voids in the building. So there we go. So then we could say load buildings returns a sequence of buildings. Now, even that to me isn't actually all that satisfactory um, because I could, let's say I just return an empty list and make that into, just for sake of argument, sorry I've mistyped that. So if we look at the signature of this, it does return what we want. But there's nothing really that's forcing us to create buildings here. Um, so we could um, kind of in the internals of this be dealing with all sorts of things that aren't really exactly the shape we want. So the way I get around that is actually I use a single case discriminated union. And this is super confusing the first time you see it. So we do that and we do that. There we go. So now we have wrapped this sequence of point Fs into something which is a type of its own. It's not just a type alias like it was before. Um, and we've used the same case name as the type name, which is perfectly legal. Just as a little recap, you might remember a proper discriminated union would be something like so that's a proper discriminated union it can take one or two cases and each case has a little payload this is also a discriminated union that's the case name it might be a little bit clearer if I put the vertical bar in although it's not actually needed the case name is the same as the type name and it still has a payload. Um, but this is more powerful than a type alias because it is an explicit type. Let's just wind that back a bit. Right, so there we go. And rather than just having returned this something empty, I'm actually going to force myself to have a body which kind of does something but won't ever make it into production code or pass any tests. I'm going to make myself a little function called not implemented I'm going to raise a not implemented exception in it so here so that still allows me to have the right type signature it still returns a sequence of buildings but if we ever call this it'll immediately fail so this won't kind of slip into production so that's our load buildings function. And I'm very consciously staying at the signature level here rather than diving into implementations. We need to find some buildings. 
where do we need to find them? Between some point, and remember point F is defined in system.drawing, and some other point. The lucky thing here is this shape file set is in terms of the um, Great Britain coordinate system, which is just an XY position, so we don't have to worry about latitudes and longitudes. So that's our kind of bounding box. Where are we going to find them? In, in what are we going to find them? We're going to find them in a sequence of buildings. And what are we going to return? Another sequence of buildings. Presumably a smaller sequence. And that at the moment also is not implemented. How are we going to render them? Now, oddly enough, we will need the points here as well. And the reason for that is so that we can make sure that the image is offset so that it begins at the left edge of the bitmap we render rather than being kind of up in the corner um, as far as the place we're rendering is up in the uh, landmass. We need to say something about the size of the bitmap. We want, might want it on a huge bitmap for some kind of high resolution print, or we might want it on a tiny bitmap for an icon even. So we're at least going to need to say how wide the bitmap is going to be. That can be an integer. Don't actually need to say how high it's going to be because we can work out the aspect ratio, the ratio of width to height, of the bounding box we drew with. And clearly, unless we want to distort the image, the bitmap needs to have the same proportions. Let's just um, follow Alistair Ray's practice of just having one colour for the buildings and another colour for the background. That's going to be a colour, which is also in system.drawing. I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit for now so you can see the whole of that signature. And what are we going to render? Some buildings. That's going to be a sequence of buildings. What's that going to return? A bitmap with the buildings on. So we can just return bitmap. Again, let's make that not implemented. And finally, we're going to need to save the bitmap, which I'm guessing is going to be a fairly trivial function, but we'll make it explicit anyway. Again, we'll allow ourselves a native string for the path. We're going to need to provide a bitmap. And let's be naughty and assume this is going to succeed, so it just returns unit, which you might remember as F-sharp's way of saying, I have no real value to return. So this is going to be an imperative function. That's not implemented as well. And there we go. We've got a fairly kind of neat seeming little set of functions. How do we kind of validate that that kind of hangs together sensibly? Well, we can kind of write our main function as well. Because we've actually got real signatures of these but they're not implemented, we can call them. Let's make a main draw buildings function. It's going to need to take the shapefile path. It's going to need to take the file pattern. It's going to need to take this bounding box set of points. It's going to need to let us specify all those things. And finally, we're going to need to say where to save the resulting bitmap. Now we can actually go ahead and implement this. Let me just zoom in a bit more for you. So we can say we've got a load buildings. What do we give it? The shape file path and the file pattern. And then we're going to pipe that into the fine buildings for our bounding box. 
Now, you can see now that if you have got sensible signatures for your kind of inner functions up here, then they really nicely fit together as a little pipeline. Um, and the key to getting this right is to make sure that the thing you're likely to want to pipe in, in this case, the set of buildings or the sequence of buildings that come back from load buildings, is the last argument of the function you're piping into. And lo and behold, it is. If I had done this, which might seem a bit more instinctive coming from some other language, then clearly you can't pipe in because the way piping works is uh, it populates the last argument of the function you're piping into. Uh, and you eventually kind of develop an instinctive feel for the argument you're going to need to declare last to facilitate that. Um, but clearly, if you get it wrong, it's not hard. You'll find out at this point you can swap them around. After we've found the buildings, we need to render them. So we can just call render buildings. Again, we said we'd have to, and I've got a typo here, haven't I? Provide the points for reasons of scaling and um, positioning. We need to provide the bitmap width. We need to provide the foreground. Did I call them foreground? I did. And we can then send that into save, providing the save file path. So that really closely mirrors what we said when we first started just typing comments. In fact, it says exactly the same, load the buildings, find the buildings, render the buildings, and save the bitmap. Um, now, of course, I've done this quite slickly because clearly I've rehearsed this. And if I had like, forgotten that I was going to need to provide the bounding box in the render buildings, I would have found out when I was assembling these together. Uh, but even then, actually, you probably won't uh, drive out all the arguments you're going to need in this process. So if you find this is a less slick process than I'm presenting here, it's not because um, you're dumb. <laughs> it's simply because uh, I have rehearsed this and therefore it's coming out a bit more slickly than it did in real life. Um, when I did rehearse this, I did find that I went on to implementation and had to circle back to the level we're looking at here in order to get the exact arguments exactly right. Um, so don't be fooled into thinking you need to get this right first time. It's always an iterative process. So we're going to leave it there for now, for this video. And uh, you, you can probably envisage what you're going to need to do, particularly if you've looked at the uh, preceding video using the same data set, what you're going to need to do in the bodies of each of these functions. So you're very welcome either to try and implement this yourself and see if you get nice bitmaps out, uh, or you can wait for the next video where I'll actually do the implementation of these functions. Let me just finish off with some quick acknowledgements. Firstly, as ever, to Alistair Ray, who inspired all this. Um, secondly, to the OS, the Ordnance Survey, for providing the database. And this uh, demo does contain OS data. Um, I will provide a download link for the data in the comments to the video. So I acknowledge uh, that data is fundamental to this demo. Uh, and finally, EasyGIS who actually does the heavy lifting um, when we actually come to implement this stuff. So thanks for listening. Have a go at implementing this yourself. If you don't fancy it, wait for the next video and all will become clear. Thanks for listening to Casual F Sharp. See you next time. Bye.